Welcome to this session. My name is Russ Pastino, and the title of the session is Bring Data to Life. We have an incredible component here at Great City called Active Analysis. My information is there. Contact info at TV is the Twitter handle. This is uh, going to be a really cool session for uh, some of the folks here that uh, are working with uh, BI analysis tools. I know I talked to a few of you at the booth. Uh, recently, we packaged up PowerSuite, and all of our components are in there. This is our video site, Grapevine TV, gvtv.gcpowertools.com. So let's get started here. What is active analysis? Well, we're a pivot table and we have additional graphical features, okay, that allow you to perform better analysis. And it's a component, which is a really key thing. And I was talking to Carl Franklin last night down at the bar. And he said, you know, if I were a developer consultant, and honestly, he said this, he says, I could make a ton of money writing BI apps, right, for our customers that use BI. All right, so what's the difference between Power Pivot? Who here has heard of Power Pivot? All right, new thing coming out right down the road, as well as, uh, you know, our analysis services. Uh, well, the thing to remember, once again, is active analysis is a component and can be programmatically controlled. Um, you know, nothing really competes with this component. There's really nothing else in the market that is similar to it. Uh, now, let's go ahead and get started. We'll show you how to create a basic application uh, by just really setting a few properties is all we have to do. And we'll show you creating one here from scratch. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start out with a WinForms demo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three demos today. We're gonna talk about um, doing this under WinForms. We're gonna talk about doing this under um, Silverlight as well as ASP.NET because it does run on all of those uh, applications. So let's go ahead and we'll go out to uh, Code Mash, create our WinForm app. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start out by simply dragging on our relational data source. And this is where we're gonna go ahead and wire up a few things here in terms of the properties. Uh, namely, what we're gonna do is wire up uh, the following. We need a connection string, we need a connection type, which we're gonna go, in this first demo, we're gonna go against the SQL database. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a uh, schema file which we have a utility for that gets shipped with active analysis. And then finally, we're gonna put our query string in there, what kind of data we wanna bring back and analyze. So let's go over to our, our, uh, our tool I talked about for the schema generation. And it's shipped with active analysis, like I said. So we'll go down to the Grape City section, go into active analysis, and under the tools, uh, you can see we have a schema editor. So let's go ahead and bring that up. We're gonna go ahead and connect out. One thing we wanna do is go ahead and get this query string established. So we'll go out to SQL Server. Go ahead and pull up my database. And once this comes up, we're gonna hit point to the uh, Northwind database. And so I wanna keep in mind, not only can you get data from uh, you know, OLAP or, or analysis services, but you can get uh, you know, relational database from uh, regular tables, and as well as even XML files, as far as that goes. All right, so we have this all set. We've got our string, and let's go ahead and get it from the orders. And this will go ahead and create our schema. So there it is. Uh, let's go ahead and save out the schema. I'll go ahead and overwrite that one that's there, and there it is. So we got that all set. So what we'll do here is put in our connection string into the app. We're gonna put in our schema file that we just generated, and then we're gonna go ahead and put in uh, our data for the uh, orders. All right, now comes the magic, right? So we got our data source, that's the hard work, right? That's done. The next thing we're gonna do is put on our pivot view and this is our control, right? This is active analysis. And all we're gonna do here is go ahead and set our data source to the uh, control that we have on the form. And then we'll go ahead and uh, fill this. So let's go ahead and run this. And what you'll see here is some cool stuff in terms of uh, what we can do uh, with the uh, data. All right, so the first thing we'll see, we'll bring this up, is you have attributes and you have measures. Typically your attributes are categories and uh, typically your measures are numbers, right? And 
this will automatically figure it out. So it automatically does that, and you, you have uh, the ability to now start doing some uh, slicing and dicing of your data. Uh, so let's go ahead and just show you a couple quick examples here. So we'll take a look at the ship date. What we're going to do is just simply drag uh, the ship date up to our columns. And you'll see the, uh, the years come in there, right? Seven, eight, nine. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the um, measures. And we'll go ahead and drag in, say, freight over to our label. Now that's going to give you your, your data. Now typically, uh, this is what you would see you know, if you're using a uh, pivot table, this kind of a view with numbers, with data. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and bring data to life, like I was talking about, you just go ahead and drag that freight value up to the road line and instantly right there, now you can start seeing some uh, horizontal graphs. If you want a different look to it, go ahead and bring it down to rows and now you can actually see a line kind of chart. So, very, very easily, within five minutes now, we just created an app for uh, business intelligence, right? And uh, you can go ahead and, and, you know, compile this, ship it, and sell it, right? And make some money. Yeah, question. Do you have this for, in, for in your web tools? Web tools or just it's a, we have a web version available, absolutely. And I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Okay, uh, other thing. You can take a look at You can click on this and you can drill down, right? So you can actually see uh, by quarter now, you know, and so forth. And... Just keep on uh, going down month, year, and day. So far, really, we haven't done any coding, have we? We just go ahead and set up some data sources, and that was the control itself that we saw in the um, uh, application. So a lot of things on here. Let's just go ahead and demonstrate these. So we'll come down to the uh, Grape City. We got the active analysis. Come down to our viewers, and you can see we got three uh, sample viewers here, ASP.NET, Silverlight, WinViewer. Let's show you the Silverlight one now. All right, so let's go ahead and connect out. We're going to bring up a, uh, actually a XML file we're going to connect to in this case. Just show you how you know, both ends of the spectrum can be met here. Really great for doing prototyping for the, as well for OLAP, for those of you doing that kind of analysis, another use for this tool. Uh, so here we have um, our attributes and our uh, measures. And what I'm going to do first of all is go ahead and put in uh, the area. Let's go ahead and drag the area up over to the rows and then go ahead and put in the uh, GDP purchasing power up to the columns. So now you can see the areas, the countries, then you have the you know, age ranges right, that we have to do our uh, analysis with. And once we start doing that, then we can go ahead and bring things like the life expectancy, for example, uh, down to the label. That'll go ahead and give us our graph. And what's going to happen when I drag it from the label up to the columns? Anybody? Bueller? That's it, man. We're going to get a chart, right? So I'll go ahead and bring this up here. And there it is, right? So now you got that uh, uh, horizontal bar chart. Once again, you come down here and you get the vertical kind of orientation. We'll take a look at some of the shapes and trend lines you can do uh, on these charts. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and clear the layout. That's one of the other uh, things you can do here uh, with the clear layout button. Start over fresh. Uh, by the way, once you get everything set up kind of the way you want to, you can go ahead and save it out as an analysis file. Load it in programmatically if you want, and you'll have that same look and feel throughout your uh, particular application. Uh, so what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and start out. We'll do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and uh, bring up the literacy uh, up to the columns. We're going to go ahead and take the life expectancy. Once again, we're going to go, whoops, put this right over here. And literacy we're going to bring up over here. And oh, what we're going to do is go ahead and take the areas and bring them down to the level of detail. So level of detail shows you a data point for each level, and without a level of detail, you get one uh, aggregated point. Uh, so you can see now, starting to chart out with that uh, um, value, if I hover over any one of these, you can kind of see the data right, that we, uh, represent, is represented in there. You can also right mouse click on this and go ahead and show your trend lines. You can right mouse click on this, go ahead and get an aggreg aggregated view, and you can right mouse click on this and go ahead and get underlying data. What do you think of that? Pretty nice? Sweet? All right, next thing uh, we'll take a look at here is uh, colors. Oh, I almost forgot about that, right? So I'm going to go ahead and bring our areas right down to the colors. And abracadabra, presto magic, there you go. You got a little color chart and you got the uh, actual uh, values. Really, the sky's the limit in terms of what you want to do from an analytical standpoint. So what I'm going to do, show you next is a very cool thing, which you can actually build customers, and that's build them a BI dashboard. 
And basically what you're going to end up doing is taking these shelves, you're going to toggle them off, you're going to toggle the scheme off, and now you're going to have yourself a, a dashboard. So let's go ahead and get started and show you how to do that programmatically. So we're going to fire up uh, Visual Studio, and in the new project, let's go ahead and pick the uh, ASP uh, web page. So we'll show you all three flavors here today. There's Azure support as well uh, with the component. And once this page comes up, all we're going to do is add a uh, table in and go ahead and put our controls inside a couple of the cells in the uh, table. So let's go up to uh, this one here. Let's go ahead and put in our pivot view in the first cell. I'm going to put in our pivot view in the second cell. And let's go ahead and get rid of the ones that we don't need. And now we got our start to our dashboard. So we take a look at this in design mode. Let's go ahead and bring up the properties for this. And what we'll see is the height. Let's go to 500 and the width, say, 450. And we'll do the same thing on the the second, uh, where do we got in here? 500, and the width is 450. And then we'll go ahead and bring out the uh, data source, right? So what we're gonna do is put in a local cube data source this time. So we have one for one side, we're gonna have one for the other one. Throw both of those in. Let's go out to the source, and over here, uh, what we're going to do is bring in our data, uh, excuse me, our code. And we are going to need one more reference. I'll take a look at this code here in a second. But let's go ahead and add our reference in. Grape City, Active Analysis, Front End Library. And we're good to go. So what this code is doing here, it's actually loading programmatically now our data source, right? So we have, this is, this is a sample that comes with our, our app. When you download it, you can go ahead and uh, run this. And then also you have the analysis file. So this is the one I mentioned when you can save off when you're in the uh, tool and you have your look and feel established, what rows, count, measures, or whatever you want to do, it's going to go ahead and load that in. So we do that for each particular side. Uh, we'll come down over here. Let's go ahead and finish this off. And what we're going to do is turn off uh, programmatically now the scheme of the toolbar and the panels, like we saw me do uh, through the GUI interface, but we're doing it all through the code. Now we'll go ahead and run this, and uh, you can build, you know, wherever you want your customer to build a BI solution, but man, you can see how easy this is. And uh, there you go. Look at that. You got yourself a dashboard. How about that? Pretty nice? <laughs> all right. So lastly, uh, on this, you got globalization. So let's go ahead and show you how to globalize this with uh, some of the built-in assemblies, actually, that come with um, active analysis. And let's go out to the um, place where we store those. So let's go to make uh, this Russian. I'm going to copy the built-in assemblies. Now there's uh, out-of-the-box support here for French, Spanish, uh, Russian, uh, and a few other languages, but you can also create your own. Uh, so you're really not uh, at the short end of the stick. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and comment out this first pivot table so you can see, actually see the translations. We're going to go ahead and take that um, solution here. We're going to add in that file we just copied, paste it in to our, our bin directory. And the last thing we're going to do is just go ahead and modify uh, the config file to go ahead and pretend we are Russian. So it's going to set the UI culture to uh, Russian. Now, let's go ahead and run this. On the uh, left side of the page is our, you know, our measures, attributes, shelves, the whole GUI is there. And you'll see it when I, actually when you'll see it plain as day, all the labels for that particular control are in, uh, in Russian. And there it comes. And you see it right there. How about that? Pretty nice? <laughs> Woohoo! All right, I can't believe we did that in uh, like 15 minutes, so that wasn't too bad. Any questions before I uh, go through some of the summaries, and we'll do a little raffle here as well. Yeah, question. Am I able to like hide a lot of the context menus like from 
from the user as far as like when they when they see the pivot control. Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, I think uh, what you're asking is, can you programmatically control that? You know what you're saying? Yeah. So right from the code, you can go ahead and say you want to go ahead and turn off certain pieces of that component from the view. So what we saw here is a uh, easy component, right? I think you would agree for developing BI applications. Uh, it's really as simple as wiring up your data source. It runs in uh, you know multiple platforms as well. We got uh, ASP.NET, Silverlight, Windows. We demonstrated those right here for you, as well as Azure support. Uh, full feature component, drag and drop, pretty much done. Great documentation to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm actually going to be starting a blog series on active analysis coming up. I have currently am in the middle of doing a blog series on active reports, our, our great reporting tool. Um, the pivot table, you know, you just turn graphs into graphs instantly. And that's what I'm talking about, bringing that data to life. Because, you know, you know that's saying, right? Pitches worth a million words, yeah, a thousand words. Uh, a lot of shapes, colors, uh, you hover over values, even in Silverlight, you have the right mouse click ability in Silverlight too. Uh, filters, I didn't show you filters, but you can go ahead and filter uh, data very easily. Again, dragging a field into that filter box that you saw on the shelves, go ahead and pop up and go ahead and filter out your data by year or whatever you want to do. Uh, developer license, very important. This is a per seat uh, user license not a per seat you know distribution license right so this is very very important it's a very attractive licensing model for developers uh, pdf support as well as print preview you got themes localization and it's now included with power suite which uh, has um, really everything in the kitchen sink in it uh, so the public release uh, is 2.1705 at the moment uh, you can initiate uh, uh, SQL Server analysis uh, services actions to add value to your cube. You can let uh, uh, SASS, go, SSAS go ahead and do all of your work on the, on the server end and bring back that data to go ahead and slice and dice up in the control. Uh, capable of using ADO.NET uh, data providers uh, such as SQLite, SQL CE. Uh, it's more flexible in setting custom schemas with support and in-memory schemas. Uh, a lot of great samples as well as my blog information up there. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Go to gvtv.gcpowertools.com, your online source for developer news. Plus, follow us on Twitter and Facebook.